Hi, um, before we start our presentation today, I'm going to briefly introduce to you what is Bosch. So Bosch is Basic Occupational Safety and Health which is also the same for OSH, which stands for Occupational Safety and Health. The term BOSCH is a part of every student curriculum to know the safety and risk of every situation. But the main objective of these two topics is still the same, which is to provide information about any hazard or risk that they encounter. As we dive into this topic, we can easily understand why Bosch has been established and how effective Bosch is for students. Regarding to our first slide, my expectation to this topic would be challenging. Since we are dealing with risk, it would be difficult for us to comprehend. But with proper knowledge, application, I think we would enjoy this subject. I apologize for not properly introducing myself. My name is Dale. My hobbies are photography and writing stories. I'm in my third year of computer engineering at TIP Manila. I'm pursuing this course because I do believe that it would help me expand my knowledge when it comes to technological advancement and also to gain better understanding of computer system. My goal as today's presenter is to help you understand the importance of occupational safety and health in relation to my course today, which is computer engineering, and to know what are the risks that we may face as worker and also as a student. Um, as you can see on our slide, we have a lot of agenda for today, so please bear with me. So these are the topics that I will explain to you as well as a question that we are going to answer in order for us to easily comprehend the information provided to you. So we have six agenda. The five and six is on the other slide. But for now, we have four, which is number one, what is occupational safety and health, the types of accident, unsafe and unsafe conditions and perspective or understanding of basic industrial hygiene okay as we move on to the next slide so this is our five and six one of our agenda for today which is industrial hygiene related to computer engineering and lastly our summary and conclusion no worries if you didn't catch up because I'm going to explain to you every topic and every word for you to easily understand how important Bosch to every student, especially who are pursuing computer engineering. As we go to our next slide, which is our first agenda, we are going to define what is occupational safety and health. We are now on our first agenda which is defining what is occupational safety and health or OSH. So it is a field of study and practice that focus on the identification, assessment, and control of hazard in the workplace or learning environment. It is concerned with ensuring the well-being and safety of workers and students by preventing accident, injuries, and illness that may arise from their activities. So OSH is essential because it plays a significant role in protecting workers and students from harm. It helps create a safe and healthy environment where individuals can perform their tasks without being exposed to undue risk. Additionally, OSH enhances productivity and performance by minimizing downtime due to accident or illness and reducing the financial burden associated with workplace injuries and compensation claims. For workers, they have a crucial role to play in ensuring OSH. They must follow all safety guidelines, protocols, and procedures provided by their employers. 
This includes wearing appropriate personal protective equipment, which is PPE. We are familiar with this um, equipment because it is used to treat COVID patients, especially in the hospital. But with this suit, it can easily prevent hazard or unsafe condition in participating in safety training program. As student, we also have a role to play in OSH, whether we are in a classroom, laboratory, or any other learning environment. We must follow all safety instruction and guidelines provided by our instructor or educational institution. This include handling chemicals and equipment safely, wearing appropriate protective gear, and reporting any safety concern to our instructor or other responsible personnel. Occupational safety and health is a crucial aspect of our lives. As workers and students, it is our responsibility to prioritize safety and health in our workplace or learning environment by following all the safety guidelines, protocols, and procedure. By doing so, we can e create a safe and healthy environment that promote productivity and well-being and success. Now, we have easily identified and discussed what is occupational safety and health. We may now proceed in the risks that we may encounter as computer engineering. Now we are here on our second agenda, which is type of accident happening in our workplace and how to avoid this accident that related to my current program, which is computer engineering. As we all know, accident can occur in any work environment. And it's important to be aware of potential hazard and take preventive measure to keep ourselves and colleagues safe. So let's dive in into some of the most common type of accident that can occur in your workplace. One of the most common accident in the workplace is tripping or sleeping hazard. This can occur due to wet or slippery floors, uneven surfaces, cluttered walkways, and obstructed pathways. Creeping or sleeping hazard can result in falls, which can cause injuries such as sprain, fracture, or head trauma. Aside from that, most of the computer engineering is working in the office, and sometimes we are not aware in our posture when sitting. So we may experience ergonomic injuries due to poor posture, awkward body position, and repetitive motion. Ergonomic injury can lead to musculoskeletal disorder such as back pain, neck pain, and carpal tunnel syndrome. Since computer is a tool used by computer engineering, we intend to prolong ourselves in the device that we are using, which can cause eye strain and eye vision problem, which is common in our workplace. Eye strain can result in symptoms like dryness, red eye, blurry vision, and headache. So as we prolong ourselves on the screen, yes, we intended to feel this problem or injury. So sometimes it can cause nearsighted or sighted astigmatism, which is very hassle for us computer engineering. Now, it is important to be aware of this common type of accident that can occur in our work environment, such as these three common types of injury. Now, since we have identified the problem, we may now proceed to our solution. Since we have identified the type of accident happening in a workplace, we may now proceed to our solution, which is keeping work area tidy and free. To prevent this accident, it is essential to keep work area clean and well-maintained, promptly clean up spills, 
Use warning sign for wet floors and ensure proper lighting in all area to avoid tripping or sleeping hazard. To prevent ergonomic injuries, it is important to set up a working station ergonomically, use ergonomic equipment and tools, take regular breaks to stretch and move, and practice proper posture and body mechanics. Aside from that, to prevent eye strain and eye vision problem, it is crucial to take regular break from screen time, adjust the screen brightness and contrast, position the monitor at eye level, and practice the 20-20-20 rules, which is taking 20 second break every 20 minutes and looking at something 20 feet away. Lastly, since computer engineering is dealing with circuits or wire, we have to ensure the safety protocol to avoid problem or call a professional to do the work to prevent electrical hazard. Since we are now finished to our second agenda, we may now proceed to our third agenda, which is unsafe acts and unsafe condition in a working environment. Since we are here on our third agenda, which is what are the unsafe acts and unsafe condition in our workplace as computer engineering and way to promote safety consciousness. As we all know, as working in the field of computer engineering, we may encounter both unsafe acts and unsafe condition that can pose risk to our health and well-being. It is crucial to identify this hazard and take proactive steps to promote safety consciousness in our work environment. So let's explore some common unsafe acts and unsafe condition in our work environment and way to promote safety consciousness among our team. So before we dive to one of the example, let's define what is unsafe acts. So unsafe acts is our action or behavior that deviate from established safety procedure and practices. In a computer engineering workplace, some common example of unsafe acts can include bypassing safety protocol, not following proper procedure, or handling electronic equipment, neglecting to wear personal protective equipment like PPE, such as anti-static wristband or safety goggles and failing to report potential hazard or incident. This unsafe act can result in accident or injury such as electric shocks, burn, or falls. This is one of the unsafe act that we would not follow as professional. So moving on to our next slide, we are going to identify or define what is unsafe conditions. Now, unsafe conditions are physical or environmental factors that can potentially cause harm or accidents. In a computer engineering workplace, unsafe conditions may include poorly maintained equipment, inadequate ventilation or lighting, improper storage of hazard materials, cluttered or obstructed pathway, and lastly, inadequate fire protection measures. This unsafe condition can pose risk to our health and safety and may also lead to equipment damage or data loss. Since we have identified and defined what is unsafe act and unsafe condition, we therefore conclude as a computer engineering, it is important to be aware of both unsafe act and unsafe condition that may exist in our working environment. We can prevent this act by promoting safety consciousness through training, clear policy, regular maintenance, proper use of PPE, reporting and addressing hazard, working station ergonomics, and emergency preparedness. We can create a safer and working environment for ourselves and for our colleagues. Let's prioritize workplace safety and work together to prevent accidents and injuries. Now, we may proceed to our next slide, which is industrial hygiene related to computer engineering. Now, we are on the fourth agenda, which is based on your perspective or understanding of the basic of industrial hygiene in your workplace as computer engineering and how do you apply it. 
We are going to discuss the basic principle of industrial hygiene and how they can be applied in our workplace as computer engineers. Industrial hygiene is a field that focuses on identifying, evaluating, and controlling workplace hazards to protect the health and safety of a worker. As professional and also a student, in the field of computer engineering, it is important for us to understand how to implement industrial hygiene practices to ensure a safe and healthy work environment. So let's dive in to some key steps in applying industrial hygiene in our workplace. So number one, based on the hazard assessment and risk evaluation, control should be implemented to reduce or eliminate exposure to hazard. For example, implementing proper grounding procedure, ensuring ergonomic working station setup, and providing appropriate ventilation and PPE for handling hazardous chemical. Control may include engineering controls, administrative controls, personal protective equipment, or PPE, depending on the nature of the hazard. Number two, in applying industrial hygiene, in our workplace is to conduct a true hazard assessment to identify potential hazard. As computer engineer, we may encounter hazards such as electrical hazard, ergonomic hazard from improper work, workstation setup, and potential exposure to hazard chemical during equipment maintenance. By identifying this hazard, we can take proactive measures to prevent or control both exposure. Number three, one potential hazard has been identified. It is important to assess the risks associated with each hazard. This involves evaluating like livelihood and severity of exposure to the hazard and its potential impact on workers, health, and safety. For example, if there is a risk of electrical shock from improperly grounded equipment, the severity and livelihood of such an event should be assessed to determine the level of the risk. Regarding to this three example, we have only one example to the other slide. So let's try to define and understand what is the last example. For our last example, we should know that industrial hygiene program should be regularly reviewed and revised to ensure the effectiveness in identifying and controlling workplace hazard. As computer engineers, we should continuously evaluate our IH program, update hazard assessment, review control, and assess the effectiveness of our risk management strategy. This may involve periodic inspection, monitoring, and feedback from workers to make a necessary adjustment to the program. In conclusion, applying industrial hygiene principle in our workplace as computer engineer is essential to protect our health and safety by identifying potential hazard, assessing risks, implementing controls, and regularly reviewing and revising our IH program. We can create a safer work environment for ourselves and also to our colleague. Now, let's prioritize industrial hygiene and work together to ensure a healthy and safe workplace or working environment. Now, we may proceed to our next slide, which is a type of health hazard related to computer engineering. We are now on our fifth agenda, which is industrial hygiene type of health hazard in relation in computer engineering. Today, we'll be discussing an important aspect of workplace safety, which is industrial hygiene. Specifically, we will be focusing on the type of health hazard that computer engineer may encounter in their working place. As computer engineering, we face a various health hazard in our workplace. One common hazard is ergonomic hazard which can result from repetitive motion, awkward posture, or sustained sitting. This hazard can lead to musculoskeletal disorder, back pain, or carpal tunnel syndrome. Another potential health hazard is radiation. Many computer engineers work with display monitor or other equipment that emits radiation. 
which can cause eye fatigue, headache, and even increase the risk of cancer. Now, moving on our next slide. Aside from what I mentioned in my previous slide, we also have electrical hazard, which is also prevalent in our working field. Working with computers involves dealing with electricity and hazards such as shocks or burn, which can occur if proper safety measures are not followed. Aside from that, we also have chemical hazard, which is also present in our working place, depending on the type of work being done. Computer engineer may come into contact with chemicals such as cleaning agent, solvent, and toner, which can pose risk if not handled properly. As computer engineering, we must be vigilant in identifying and managing health hazard, especially in our working place. By being aware of the potential risks associated with ergonomic, radiation, electrical, and chemical hazard, and taking appropriate preventive measures, we can ensure a safer and a healthy work environment. Let's prioritize industrial hygiene and work together to protect our health and well-being. Since we have talked about the health hazard, let's move on on how can we prevent and create a solution for this problem. Since we have talked about the type of health hazard in relation to computer engineering, today we're going to talk about an important topic that affects the health and safety of workers in various industries. We will explore how simple measures like taking break, doing stretching exercises, and using ergonomic design equipment that can help reduce risk. It is also crucial to follow proper handling storage and disposal procedure for harmful substances. This is one of our solutions that we may use in avoiding this health hazard. Aside from this, there are still available solutions that we may use in our next slide. Additionally, wearing appropriate protective gear, using grounded electrical equipment, and following standard operating procedure are important for safety measure. We will also discuss the importance of using protective eyewear and adjusting monitor brightness to reduce risk, just like reporting to a television. As we dive into our conclusion, industrial hygiene plays a crucial role in ensuring the health and safety of a worker in a various industry. By implementing these measures, we can minimize risk and create a safer working environment. Since we have answered and explained our agenda, we may now proceed to our summary and conclusion. We are now on our last agenda, which is our summary and conclusion. We know Bosch teaches us how to identify and evaluate various hazards in the workplace, including physical, chemical, biological, and ergonomic hazard. Additionally, it emphasizes the importance of risk management to prevent accident and injuries. It provides us with the knowledge and skill to identify and evaluate workplace hazards. This hazard can range from physical hazards such as unsafe equipment or environmental condition to chemical hazards such as harmful substances or gases. Bosch also covers biological hazards such as exposure to pathogen or infectious diseases and ergonomic hazard which can result from repetitive motion or awkward postures. By understanding and identifying these hazards, we can take appropriate measures to control or eliminate them, thus creating a safer work environment for ourselves and our colleague. Bosch also emphasized the importance of conducting true risk assessment to identify potential risks associated with workplace activities and implementing effective risk management strategy to mitigate or eliminate those risks. Don't be excited yet! We still have our last solution which is on the other side. So let's try to explore. Always remember that Bosch include legal requirement that set minimum standard for workplace safety and health. This law and regulation are in place to protect workers from hazards and ensure that employers provide a safe working environment. By complying with this legal requirement, we can create a safer workplace and prevent accidents and injuries. 
Let's not forget that effective communication is also emphasized in Bosch. It encourages open and clear communication between workers, manager, and safety professionals. This includes reporting potential hazard, discussing safety procedure, and providing training and information to all stakeholders. By promoting effective communication, we can enhance awareness, collaboration, and understanding of workplace safety and health. Since this is our last slide, we hope that you learn so much about Bosch in relation to computer engineer. Hoping you will take this knowledge on future work to help yourself and the people around you. All I can say is, Padayon Engineers, we wish you good luck.